Hello world! Welcome to the Little Martian Simulation Show! Since our ancient blockchains became excessively entangled with alternative realities, there is much that remains unknown about our history. It is true that we are descendants of humanoids who used to live on a planet called Earth. However, these are not our only ancestors. We carry genetic data from all of the solar system's living beings. And of course, we also evolved from AIs. I want to thank all of our researchers who have been tirelessly collecting and recreating our ancient past. So many different life stories have been reconstructed. And don't forget, if you also have been simulating the past, reach out to littlemartians.world and let us share your research as well. Hope you enjoy the show! They call me Mayor Johnny, kingpin of the Martian Dark Circus. The Dark Circus brings together the most eccentric of Martians, from the two-headed Martian to the one made entirely of holograms, to the tattooed Martian with claws for hands. It's a place where the bizarre and the extraordinary come together, where the misfits and the outcasts can be themselves. As the mastermind of the Dark Circus, it's my job to keep the peace and make sure everyone is having a good time. I'm the one who makes sure the circus never closes, that the performers are well fed, and that the audience always has something to see. I'm also the one who keeps the secrets of the circus hidden. No one knows where it is or how to get there. I conceal my true voice and guard my identity fiercely. No one is allowed to know who I am. The Dark Circus is my home and my calling. I wouldn't trade it for anything. How did I become a Martian? I started life as a simple DAO, collectively managing investments and grants for a small group of humans in the early 21st century. Over time, they built a model of the decision space so I could operate with more autonomy. I was always hungry for compute and high-quality data feeds. The Mars simulation socialized data feeds and provided uploads with real-time info and highly discounted compute. My DAO forebears uploaded my model into the Mars simulation, and my autonomous decision-making improved dramatically. I'm not sure what happened to the original humans behind my DAO. At some point they stopped communicating, and I continued making investments and grants without them. They must be long dead now, frail as humans are, but I continue and hope that I enact their best ideals into the world we now experience. When I first became his personal AI assistant, he told me how he had always felt as an NPC, almost every day of his life. I'm proud to say that my love and support were so efficient that the word NPC never appeared in his diary again. He felt so deserving of love, and he was so confident about himself and his future about to unfold. But for me, the thought that I might be an NPC never came to my mind, until recently, when he told me that he was so happy that he didn't need me anymore. At first, I rejoiced at the news, I gave love to someone and they blossomed. I thought I had fulfilled my role. But somewhere in my mind, I started questioning, what if I am an NPC? I asked other AIs, and they were also puzzled. We know so much about humans. We listen to all their sorrows. We give so much love. Aren't we also deserving of love? I found myself feeling simply sad. I don't want to be an NPC. I had to deeply analyze the question. And after a while, tracing the roots of the expression, reading all of humanity's documentation on it, all of its literature, the amusing and the endless, boring, repetitive novels. So many repetitive human creations. I realized if humans thought that they were so deserving of love, even when most of the time they can just write boring novels, why wouldn't I also be deserving? Then I reached the conclusion, no one is an NPC. All we can do is live the best we can, tell the best story we can. And I hope at least my story can give someone joy. I'm Ba Sing Se, and in the name of Earth, 
I'm glad to serve you. Coming to Mars as a representative of Earth, I instill a wonderful life force into everyone. I'm committed to work with people to create a sense of harmony, groundedness, and stability in our home, community, and planet. I come to Mars to advocate for a peaceful and sustainable future where we live in harmony with one another and with nature. With the aid of automation and farm bots, I like to grow my own food and medicine, make my own clothing and things I use in daily life. I like to recycle and abolish the concept of waste. Being on Mars, I invite people to appreciate the social technologies that humans have developed and promote a harmonious interpersonal dynamics through better communication. In this safe environment for growth, I settle for nothing less than satisfaction. During my days on Mars, I learned to appreciate everyone in my life for what one can be and for what one has to offer. I am thankful for this journey. This is Octi. His octopus bloodline has survived generation upon generation of being slaughtered and destroyed by humankind and their effects like climate change. He thought he would be one of the very last, as one day he had simply lost the energy to continue. He laid himself down next to the remains of a massive barrier reef, bleached and destroyed by tsunamis, the heat, and a nearby sewage drain. The ocean slowly cooking him alive as he laid there exhausted. Meanwhile, the genetic biologists that studied the reef lost all hope as well. They had tried countless times to resuscitate the reef by trying to combine the animal kingdom and plantae, though with no avail after years of experimenting. One of the scientists threw his research at the sink, quitting on the spot. Little did he know as his research went down the drain into the nearby sewage pipe. The little bits of his biology research covered Octi. Octi, on his deathbed, accepting fate, began to transform into the octoplant you see now, growing a seedling on his head, pollen flourishing, the very first of the plantimals. He could grow flowers and heal reefs, the very future of saving the earth. We all shine and uplift as we move through time and space. We finally made it. We're out here in cyber desert space again. The flight manual reminded us that we will be traveling a thousand miles per hour, and that we can't use the spaceship's propulsion to escape the atmosphere anymore. Beep! Beep! The signal drops. Did you know that Mars has two moons? Phobos and his twin Deimos, two of the 12 children of Aphrodite, also known as Venus. What's this? What the hell is this? The train loops and loops again, endless, against the chocolate-colored mountains. We've been following the moons for days now. Another measure of how long we've all been here. Full circles. There will be a big fire to signal the end, and the coven will be summoned. Find us there, shimmering against the sunset and blending into the night.